Uh. Yeah, I see him in the street struggling, young, dumb, and thugging, give a fuck about nothing. Stuck at rock bottom, trying to come up on something. Pumping from sundown to sun. What's up, guys? Just here, we're back on my channel. We're back to the reaction to From. This is season two, episode four, This Way Gone. Before we jump the episode, I just want to go over something very quickly here because. I recently posted a Patreon that a family member of mine was just diagnosed with cancer, so I kind of just need some time away from the camera, just be with family, and I don't know why I was thinking this, but I kind of had in my head like, nobody's really going to care, they're just here for the content, when clearly that wasn't the case. I'm so thankful for your guys' response and your thoughts and prayers. It honestly means the world to me and my family, and it kind of took me by surprise, but it was just a nice reminder too that there's actually still people out there that actually have a heart, but the monsters in this show clearly they do not you gotta love that segue too but last time on the show never mind just ripping people open now the monsters are messing with people even more because with one girl they grabbed a rod they jabbed her through a skull pinned her to a tree and left her alive so i have no idea what's going to happen next and from what i've heard this show gets even crazier from here so i'm excited to see what goes down next and it has been a minute since i watched the show so i'm not going to waste any more time but if you guys look at my full reaction to the show link to my patreon is down in the description below now subscribe to the channel now's a very good time click that button down below smash the bar there with that said let's jump right in let's check it out Let's go. And downstairs, you'll have a nice big room all to yourself. Oh shit. Come on in. Flashback episode. Hopefully. No. I don't like it here. It's too sunny. I, I want to go home. <laughs> oh, no, no, There's worse it's things okay. than the sun there. I'll give you folks a few minutes, okay? Thanks. Yeah. They were already locking eyes. Ted, what happened last night? It's safer. Just sucks knowing the outcome. He never got better, obviously. And then Sarah happened. Uh, I'll go get the rest of the stuff. Relate to Kenny right now, though. Sure, boy, hey. Everything all right? Those things were knocking on the door there. He was convinced that, uh, his brothers were outside. You know, everyone is scared and confused. But the thing I learned in the army, it always helps to have people to look to. I could use some help. Wouldn't mind having a deputy watching my six, you think? That was how it started. Oh, sir, boy! I have to say something. I have to, I have to show you now. What is it? Oh, Christ. Are you people living here now? Jay. My house collapsed. What? At least you had one. Still want to go see Victor? Yeah. When I came down earlier, she was here. She's just chilling. Well, she's handcuffed, but still, she's just chilling. Kill her. That was your chance. Kenny. Give us a minute, okay? We gotta find out what happened to her. All right. What the voices are saying, and if she knows what's going on right. now. I followed right behind you. And? And then I was here. You've been here since the other night? I didn't know what else to do. How'd you know what that tree was? A little boy told me. I am glad you're back. I am. I am. I'm not. But you be. I'm just gonna keep it real. You know what you have to do. No, I'm just gonna say this as plainly as I can. Okay, Sarah is uniquely connected to this place. Father Patry locked her up in the basement. Apparently, Nathan had come to him earlier in the day. He was worried, thought she might do something to hurt someone. He figured if something here is using her, he's gonna put two and two she together. He really is connected to this. Can he's smart? And we can use that to understand what this place actually is. So has she just been downstairs since Father Kashi died? I took her with me into the forest. Okay, he's being honest about everything. But listen, when she killed those people, people, I, I, it's just I, Nathan. I, I, no. I mean, yeah, she, she almost with it, with Ethan. You, you know what I'm talking about, right? People. Hey, we'll handle it. She's dangerous. Boy, she belongs in the box. If we really want to figure this out. Hey, she's not going in the goddamn box, okay? No one else is going in, in, into the fucking box. Oh, peace, man. 
Yeah, good attack. Okay. okay, okay. He's obviously sick though. Boy. Worms. Boy. Boy. The hell is going on? That was a scary drawing. Hi. Can I come in? Being in his room. No, you can steal anything else? I told him not to. You should have said it louder. There's nothing he could do. Jay would have kicked his ass. What are you drawing? New stuff. What kind of new stuff? Things we saw. New material. You and my mom? Yeah. I found these in the storage closet. I thought you might like them. Peaches? No. Bring up some peaches. I'll let you chill. I'm sorry, I made you mad. Hey, you're Elgin, right? Yeah. Julie, you've been here a while? Not that long. Only a season. It feels like a lifetime. Look, I know you probably have tons of people telling you they're here if you want to talk. But I'm around. Believe it or not, it actually helps. I appreciate that. And she's hey. nice to look at too. Go that on. helps I as well. You go home. I think that's my cute. It was nice meeting you. Likewise. Ethan, wait up. Is there a potential relationship there? Good. Some love in the air? I'll do the other hand. Uh, do you want to tell me about this? Yes. It's nothing. Boy. I just scratched it on a tree branch. Scratched it on a it's knife. It's effective, but keep it clean, okay? This one. You need to rest, okay? In your condition, you can't afford to be putting any extra stress on your body right now. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Nothing. I'm so sorry. The idea that anybody here could avoid putting extra stress on anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was going to say she is not amused, but uh, <laughs> she cracked a smile. Uh, not oh. a good idea. No. Lay down there all night thinking I was gonna die. And I just kept asking myself why. I still feel like he was that pushed really down the way that it all crumbled. Fucking vultures. That guy's gonna be an issue. You know Christine's fiance was on that bus? What? Yeah. When we build a new roller coaster, we design it to do things that seem impossible. The more impossible it seems, the stronger reaction you get from the people riding it. Okay. What if all this was designed? Just to see how we react. I mean, what if this is all some kind of fucked up experiment? It's possible. I just the storm was coming in, just as we were about to wrap things up, I heard a voice. A man. That's why he came running back here. He, he warned me. That was a crazy moment. Is that you, you Jim? Being, and then just like that, our house collapsed. Is that Jim? Sorry, what? Did anyone else hear it? The voice on the radio? It's your move, boy. I gotta say. What the? Your options don't look great. You're not here. He's gotta be tripping. You wanna talk about what can and can't be real? That's the part you wanna focus on? Hallucinating. I don't know. How much meds did Christy give him? How about we talk about what's really on your mind? How exactly are you going to tell Kenny that Sarah killed his dad? She didn't kill him. She opened oh, the she door did. potato potato. Let me ask you something. What benefit is there in Kenny knowing? I mean, of what value is the truth to Kenny right now? What, you think he's going to be better off once he finds out? Or will you simply be relieving the burden of your own guilt? It made things worse the longer you wait. Somehow you being dead made you more of an asshole. Leaders sometimes have to make tough decisions. Boyd, you of all people know this, but you want to be everyone's friend. But if you want to lead these people home, sometimes you have to make a shitty decision. I tried telling you this before you didn't listen. Listen to me now. You're the father. Kenny no longer has. What do you think happens when you take that away? Broken people don't survive here, boy. I don't like what they're setting up right now. You know why I'm here. If anything happens to my boy, Kenny, I told you guys, I will riot. You heard the voice on the radio. 
I know you did. She heard it. Get the fuck in here. I didn't even realize. You want to know if I heard something? Yeah, I heard it. I heard some spooky motherfucker warn you about your wife 20 was minutes spooky. before your house collapsed. If there really are people watching us, they sure as shit aren't helping us. What do you yeah, think they'll do if they, they find keep out you there. more about them? Huh? There are things around here that walk and talk just like us. Until they walk up to you and rip your fucking guts out. Making good points right now. And you know, it wasn't one of them. What happened to the radio? <sighs> it's in the back. Oh, oh so cool down in all the house. You don't touch my shit. Understand me? Hey, what's going on? You went through my back. Are you fucking kidding me? If this is gonna work, you're gonna. Enough. All right, enough. Dude, just laid on the ground like. Oh. This is gonna lose peace days out of my shit. Period. We have a way of doing things here. That's good for you. I got a way of doing things too. You touch my stuff, I will smack the fucking shit out of you. We clear. Down to the town you go. Sarah, I always thought of you as a friend. She worked with his mom. My mom adores you. My mom always thought of you as like. The daughter that she never had. We can help. We can help make people. I'm just understand. waiting for it to come out. You know, we, we it's only that. our time. I know that it was it was horrible. I know that it was unforgivable. But if we can it gets worse. make people understand why you did the things that you did, maybe we can. Kenny, stop. There's something I need to tell you. Oh no. Don't cut away. Get up. What? Get your shit. You gotta ask you yourself. Like the rules here. You can live somewhere else. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck up. Donna. You wanna tell me where we're going? You're Let's going see. to the town. Welcome to your new home. What? Up on up. As long as there's a talisman, I guess you'll survive, but. That would suck to be out there every night. Now this here is the talisman from Matthew's house. They won't be needing it anymore. What you're gonna wanna do is hang it on the window. If they're on the floor, at that point, they're just rocks. Mm. <laughs> you really don't get what's happening here. Even after everything you've seen, you still can't process the fact that this is actually real. Yeah, the fact that he's actually seen them, the is, he's still acting this way. The brightest of fucking bulbs. I'm gonna bet that it takes you longer than most. So now you get to live here. That's the luck. There's a bathroom on that bus, right? I would take another talisman in there. That could be my panic room. Excuse me. Sheriff Boyd, right? Yeah, sorry, I don't, uh... Tilly, yeah. this uh, wasn't exactly my preferred destination. <laughs> it was no one's. I understand you yourself had a bit of an adventure. Yeah, I did. I'm, I'm sorry, you'll have to excuse me. I need to go speak with my deputy. Something's up with Tilly. She sees and knows too much already. You know, before we came here, I don't think I ever once remember seeing my mom cry. And now every single night, I hear her sobbing in her room. Cause she's convinced that it was her fault. She's like the sweetest soul. And she had been here with my dad. But he didn't open the door, did he? No, he did not. No. Kenny. Don't, me, don't fucking touch me. I was going to hurt right now. When exactly were you planning on telling me? She's going in the fucking box. And she oh, killed shit. my dad. They tore him to pieces. And you knew. I don't like seeing these two butt heads. Gosh, I'm fucking six. It's no longer the head of the king. Wow, what an episode to come back to. Whew. All right, guys, that was from season two, episode four, This Way Gone. 
solid episode. Obviously, this one was very drama focused and drama centric, and I really didn't like seeing those two, the rift between those two at the very end, because you guys know I'm a Kenny supporter, so seeing Kenny and Boyd fight there, that rift between them and go their separate ways as he threw down his badge, that was like, I don't know, like a Tyrion moment, throw down the him, the king, or Ned Stark doing that, so to Robert, so man, that was freaking brutal, but. Yeah, this was definitely an interesting episode because we got to see some flashbacks as well where Kenny first, well, I guess he didn't just arrive in town. Well, he had been there for a while, but that's when his father started having some problems. And it was really all about his father and him finding out about Sarah because at the end of the last episode, which I didn't even discuss at all, is when he actually discovered Sarah hiding in the basement there. And there was a lot of interesting little things that went down this episode, which I feel like, I don't know, they're a little like little seeds being planted all over that are going to blossom throughout the series. But as of right now, for this episode, it just felt like little things, little seeds were being planted all over the place. But in terms of Kenny, I do want to focus on this at the moment because, yeah, him finding out about his father, what Sarah actually did, really caused the rift now that we're seeing between him and Boyd. I don't know how long it's going to go on for. And they also mentioned earlier this episode where we actually got to see the father... What was his name again? Father Kiatri or something like that, where he reappeared and just seeing him as a ghost-like form or the vision that Boyd is seeing, he was basically preluded to the fact that Kenny could possibly suffer from knowing this or finding out about this, about his father and what Sarah actually did to her also. So I thought that was very interesting because, I don't know, it's really leading me to believe that something might actually go down with Kenny, which you guys know, I've said before, I will freaking riot if something happens to Kenny. He's one of my favorite characters of the show. Obviously, Boyd is like the star, and Christy is my girl, but Kenny, that's my boy right there. So if something were to go down with Kenny, yeah, I would have to form an official riot. That is for damn sure. But some of the other seeds being planted this episode involved, well, Donna went off multiple times this episode, but Donna was going off and then she kicked out the one dude, the one bald dick where, I don't know, I, I just don't get this guy because he's already shown like he could be useful, but he's already shown also that he's a dick. So this episode he chose to be a dick once again and by doing so, he basically kicked one dude's ass at Colony House that went through his shit and then Donna actually kicked him out of Colony House for doing that because she's had enough. She's just trying to protect her people. So she banished him to the bus, the shuttle bus, which was just parked off to the side now, away from the cafe. But that's going to be very interesting because you already know he's going to see some things and I wouldn't be surprised if he actually starts talking to the monsters as well because they're definitely going to go to him. Now that he's going to be out there, he's going to be like cut off from the rest of the people. So he's definitely going to be the focus of the monsters moving forward. So I feel like that was another seed that was definitely planted for the future. I don't know what's going to come of it though. We shall see in the future. But also this episode, we saw Julie where she was kind of like... I don't know, I guess she wants to be a proxy, much like Fatima was for her. She basically introduced herself to Elgin. And they basically just left it at that. So that leads me to believe potential love interest. I don't know how different their ages actually are, but they're both younger, so it's possibility. But I don't really see that, like, I don't know, it's kind of like opposites. It could be an opposites attract, attract thing, though. We shall see. But for now, they just basically introduced each other, introduced themselves to each other and left it at that. Also, we got to see Ethan reunite with Victor. He had to apologize. It was like a kid fight, too, because Victor is basically like a big kid himself. And Ethan tried to give up some crayons or some markers or something to, like, make up for what he did. Let him jade in his room and for taking his shit. But... Yeah, he wasn't really having it at the moment. He's like, I'm still mad at you. He's like, okay, I kind of forgive you. I don't want to talk to you, though. Get out of my room. But very interesting scene. It's so hard to stay mad at Ethan, though, because he's definitely clearly a good kid. Yes, he asks a million and one questions, but overall, he is a good kid. And then we also saw, I'm trying to think, like, there's a bunch of little things that went down this episode. We got to see Tabitha introduce herself to Christy's fiance. And then the other big thing going down this episode was actually the voice on the radio, because we still haven't found out who that voice actually was. And it was definitely creepy because when Donna was talking to Jim about it, Donna's like, you think I want to talk about it, discuss right now about that creepy voice on the radio? And it definitely was a creepy voice on the radio. So I, uh, there's so many like loose threads right now where 
one part of me really wants to know, but another part of me knows not knowing makes it a million times better. So that was very interesting just to see Jim remember that she also heard that voice on the radio because honestly, I did it. At first when Tabitha was talking to Jim about it, like, was there anybody else that could kind of back up your story that also heard the voice? I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure everybody else ran inside, but Donna also heard the voice and she actually talked to Jim about it this episode. So she's kind of in denial. She doesn't want other people to know, but she definitely heard it. Where That was super interesting. And then we also had Victor drawing one of those faces, one of the creatures that he saw, but he was hiding it from Ethan. I guess he doesn't want to show Ethan everything. I'm trying to think of some of these other loose end threads. I think the other big thing that went down, the only other big thing, it was more or less a slower episode. The only other big thing that we did see go down this episode was void sickness in the worms that he's infected with. Clearly, it's having more of an impact on him. He's, see, he's seeing dead people now. So he's got a sixth sense now that he's got the worms in him, but he also collapses this episode, and now there's a rip between him and Kenny. Man, not a good episode for Boyd. If you're a Boyd fan, this was not a good episode for you either. So, yeah, slower-paced episode overall. I still enjoyed it. It definitely set up a lot of things for the future. Like I said, a lot of seeds being planted, but for the most part, that's pretty much all they did this episode. I definitely enjoyed seeing the flashback portion also, where because it was so much focused on Kenny finding out the secret about Sarah and what actually went down with his father. I really did enjoy that flashback and to see the father once again because it has been a while so I wasn't expecting that at all in the episode but even back then him and Christy they're already locking eyes so I felt like their their little love thing has been going on for a while. They just need <laughs> he just needs to get rid of her fiance but the one thing I didn't know is his mom actually knows all about it as well. And man, I love their relationship. He's like the perfect son. She's like the perfect mom. And yeah, I just love their family. So that's in the flashback too, just seeing that, it makes what actually happened to their family and to the father even worse. And of course, I think that's the whole point of this episode is for it to weigh even more heavy on us because it did happen a while ago back in season one. So yeah, some people might've forgot some of the ramifications of it. And now that it's all out in the open, they definitely had to tear their hearts once again. So yeah, solid episode. It was on the slower side, but still, like I said, I enjoyed it. Seeds have been planted, but I think I'm going to end it there, guys. As always, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. If you guys can like, subscribe. Really helps my channel grow. Till next time, I am out. Enjoy your night. Peace. Well, I didn't smoke enough for you. Didn't drink enough for you. Wasn't fun enough for you. Wasn't good enough for you, damn.